Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Welcome to another time here. Yeah, welcome to another time in the opera room. And an opportunity to pray. Uh, trust you had a good weekend. These are fifth week in this 17 round of weeks. We have one more week. And we'll be done with this uh, round of weeks. And we'll take a Sabbath, sabbatical opera week. And we'll come back <laughs> For the 18 to round of weeks, but it's been a pleasure. It's been awesome being able to do this. It's been great. <laughs> you know, just thinking about myself, you know, it takes a lot to just to come here and do this and being to be consistent also <laughs> in the midst of all I got to do. I guess I'm just like Martin Luther, Martin Luther, who said that I'm so busy that I must spend one hour to pray. Uh, I'm so busy, I got to pray. This makes sense of everything I do. It makes sense of my busy schedule and kind of makes everything, puts everything right, you know, puts everything in their proper perspective. You know, I see myself uh, worrying, uh, worrying in the spirit and I see uh, tangible manifestation even of that, you know, so. It encourages me to pray, you know, tells me this is uh, this is a vital part of my life, right? Even though it doesn't necessarily look like it, but it is vital to everything I do. It gives the foundation to my life. So it's a blessing to be here, you know, so that's why I got to come, right? Every time, right? I can't explain that to everybody, you know. It doesn't necessarily work for everybody, you know. Well, different. This is Akin Akin Bodoche, right? And this works for him. It doesn't have to work for you. If it doesn't work for you, you don't have to be here. It doesn't work for my wife, you know. So my wife is not here, you know. So it is what it is. I enjoy it. And uh, it's helping me fulfill the purpose God has for my life, you know. And we've been doing a study here through the book of Daniel, right? As we lead ourselves into the place of prayer. We've been doing a study through the book of Daniel. We're right now in Daniel chapter 10, verse 14, right? And that's that place where the angel was um, talking about the reason why he came, right? He, Daniel had, had a vision and the angel had come to explain to him the vision that he had, right? And the vision is about things to happen. It was a prophecy, right, of things to happen, you know. And looking at that, we wanted to just also expound it. So we're looking at prophecies as a whole. And we've done some introduction to it. There's a fourth thing on, on this, right? Uh, we've done some introduction. Uh, I talked about prayer even at the beginning. Uh, last week, uh, Friday, we spoke about what is prophecy, what is prophecy, right? We gave that introduction last week, uh, Friday. So I'm just going to continue from where we stopped last week, Friday. We talked about, you know, there is a divine order, right? Those who lost after prophecy uh, are, are going against the divine order. And when you go against the divine order, there are repercussions to it, Right. When we relate with God, we're relating with a spirit, right? And there are also other spirits, right? When you go into the spirit world, it's not just the good spirit. There's also the evil spirit. So anything you venture into the spiritual realm, the metaphysical realm, if you are not well guided, it will work against you. As much as it can work for you, it can also work against you because it is not neutral, it is an active realm, right? It is an active realm, right? What you do or not do can harm you, right? So when we talk about the spirit realm, we're talking about God. God has his way of engagement. He has his law. He has his principles, ways of doing things. If we go against it, we open ourselves up to demonic spirits. Right. So it's important that when we relate with God, we relate with him according to his word, according to his precepts, according to what he has said about himself. And therefore, that's the only way we can get the benefit of our worship of God, our relationship with God. Amen. You know, just to continue what we're talking about, you know, 
last Friday we talked about what is prophecy. You know, oh. we'll try to define what prophecy is. And today we'll continue on the divine order. I mm. guess divine order. And that divine order is that prophecy is a prerogative of God. It is not our duty to lust or force God or ask God even for a prophecy. Mm. Prophecy is God's prerogative. He decides when we need it, not we. He has already given us his word. His word is sufficient for our journey. We don't need yeah. any other thing but his word mm. to live this life successfully. To live this life successfully, you don't need one single prophecy. Yeah. Just the word of God. The word of God is the prophecy that God has given us to survive in this life and make it to heaven. Mm. All the prophecy we need is in the word of God. Right. You don't need any other person to give you a prophecy to make it in this life. Mm. Right? If God decides then that he needs to say one or two things, that is his prerogative. It's not for us to be praying about it. Mm. Right? The word we should be praying about is God give us understanding of your word. Mm. That is what we should pray about. Not God give us a prophecy. God give us a prophecy. Mm. Only evil people pray for prophecy. Mm. The people that don't want to obey God's word are looking for a way to bypass God's word. They are the ones that have looked for prophecy. Mm. Evil, That's people, right. evil, heart, evil minds are the ones that look mm. for prophecy. Because mm. they don't they feel that the word of God is not sufficient for them. Mm. So they are looking for a way to sidestep the word of God. Mm. But if you are a righteous person going to heaven, you will not run after mm. prophecy. Mm -hmm. While I run after the word of God, you word. seek to understand this word and walk with it and walk with it and walk with it and walk in it. The Bible says the just shall live by faith, not by prophecy. The just shall live by faith, not by prophecy. Mm -hmm. Paul, when he was going to Jerusalem, he had the mind of God, he knew what God's will was for him. If it was one seeking after prophecy, it would have been it would have been distracted. It would have been turned away from going to Jerusalem because prophecy came. Oh, this is what will happen to the man. Oh, this is what will happen. But Paul said, hey, "All of this does not move me. I know what God wants me to do, and I'm going to do it." But if you are looking for prophecy, those oh, oh, it might be God. God has changed His mind. This one prophecy is telling me that they will bind me. Oh, maybe God has another plan. <laughs> you know. All we need is the word of God. Mm -hmm. The door shall live by faith in the word of God, not by prophecy, but by the word of God. All the prophecy we need to live this life successfully is inside this word. Mm. Right? So when people begin to chase after prophecy, they begin to invite evil spirit in their life. Mm. Why they miss God, they begin to go into false things, false doctrines, right? They begin to they open the door for the devil to come in. When you go against the divine order, you open the door for the devil to come into your life. You know, and we have three people that have similar example of that. So Instead of him, he knew the will of God for his life. He knew God had left him. And he knew who God, who God was wanted to put in his place. Yet all his life, he fought against God's will. Instead of him obeying God's will and following God's will, he goes to a prophet to conjure the spirit of Samuel. Mm. We'll see another example, Jeroboam. Jeroboam knew God's will. God gave Jeroboam 10 out of 12 tribes. Mm. But Jeroboam turned against God into idolatry. Mm. Yet when his son was sick, he was not seeking divine help. He goes to a witch to ask for, or is he a prophet he went to, to ask mm. about his son? God deceived him. No, he went to the prophet. And God gave him what he was looking for. Right. The last one is Ahab. The Bible talks about even in heaven that God will send deceiving spirits. Mm. 
to him. God sends that also to some people because of their heart is not right. Mm. They think it's a prophecy. It looks also prophecy. But what has been sent to them are deceptive spirits. Mm. That's why their prophecies don't come to pass. Their heart is far away from God. The mm. word of God is clear. That's about what we should do. Mm -hmm. Let us yearn for the word of God, not for prophecy. When we yearn for the word and God believes that he needs to tell us something, he will tell us of his own accord. <laughs> it's not for us to push for it. It's God's prerogative when it comes to prophecy. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Ma. Yeah. We need, we need his full attention because he's always talking. Absolutely. He has something to tell us on a daily basis. Absolutely. So, we need listening ear and Absolutely. full attention to pick on the word of God. That's why it says they are new every morning. Amen. So the fact that you have been ministered to like this way on this message today doesn't mean that you don't go and sit down on it and remunerate on the word again so that the word will become new in your own ear too. We'll Amen. be able to get salient points. Yeah. Those salient points, those are the words for each person. And uh, I pray even as we listen and pay full attention, we will hear him expressly and we'll work with his word and precepts. Amen. In Jesus' name. And leave prophecy alone. Mm. Be... <laughs> you know, uh, Paul was writing, I was comparing the, the faith, the 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 righteousness that comes by the law and the righteousness that comes by faith. And he says that in the righteousness that comes by faith, he says the word is near you. Mm. Near you. The That's word true. is near you. Right? That's true. The word is near you. That's a word of prophecy. Mm. Right? When, you, when we focus on the word of God, we meditate on it, that word will speak. Mm -hmm. it speaks. That's where faith comes from. Mm -hmm. When I read the word, I study the word, I meditate on the word, and I live the word, that word will speak. Mm -hmm. It is a word that will be near you, even in your mouth, mm -hmm. in your heart. The Bible says yeah. that we should let the word of God dwell in us so richly oh, that it will, it will give us wisdom in all our ways. Mm -hmm. That's a prophecy, not going to meet one strange person. Oh, what is God saying? Mm -hmm. What is God saying? Which is different from the word of God. Yes. It's not God. Yes. Those people speaking, they are not God, except yes. you have made them the second God in your life. They have. When you seek mm. a prophecy like that, they have. Mm. This book, oh, Sikira is here. Sikira, who's Sikira? Who's Sikira? I mean, mm. God cannot speak to you. Don't Sikira, what? Mm. <laughs> They've made a mess of it all. It is well. It is well. <laughs> mm. It is well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great yes, many of the day. God bless you. You too. Bless you, Ma. See you tomorrow, Bye. God willing. Bye. Amen. Bye. Bye. Bye.